welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be my January empties. So we're gonna go over all the products that I used up in January. And then I'm gonna talk about all the products that I purchased in January. I decided this year, 2024, was gonna be the year that I was going to just kind of try to rein back my consumption a little bit. So I'm gonna keep myself accountable by going over not just my empties, but my purchases. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love it if you stuck around. But with all that, let's just get started talking about these products. All right, so I explained this in my last empties video, which I'll link down below if you haven't seen it. But I really want to try to get a hold on my purchasing, try and just make smarter choices and put a little bit more thought into my purchases rather than just impulsively buying, buying, buying. So I have a list of rules for myself, which I will pop up on the screen here, but essentially I'm allowed to purchase three items per month. And that is one eyeshadow, cat one thing from an eyeshadow category, one thing from a complexion, meaning bronzer, blush, or highlight, and then one thing from a base product, meaning foundation or concealer. So three products every month, and my points don't roll over, meaning if I don't purchase something in January, I don't get to purchase two in February, and that's to really just make me think before purchasing, and then the rest of the items, lipsticks, primers, anything else, I'm just not gonna purchase from. Now, I do just want to give a little bit of a caveat because I think I didn't talk about this last time, but any kind of gifts or if I happen to get PR, those aren't gonna count because I'm not necessarily choosing them unless I'm specifically asking for a gift and you know my husband buys it, whatever, then I will count that as a purchase because I decided to choose what my gift was. Now, I think we'll start with my purchases and I'm very happy for my first month. I thought January was going to be the hardest month so far. I'm only, we're, we're doing a trial run here. I'm only doing four months to see how it goes, but I do intend to do this for the entirety of the year. I just want to take it slow and set myself up for success, but I hesitated even starting this because January is my birthday month so I knew it was going to be tough and I'm happy to say I only purchased two items so I did not purchase anything in the eyeshadow palette category none and I'm really happy about that I think I knew which eyeshadow I wanted to pick kind of towards the end of the month but I decided that I really just didn't need it and quite honestly January was a very hard month for me um, and I didn't want the memory attached to that eyeshadow palette that sounds very silly but I do kind of have like sentimental feelings towards some makeup products and I didn't want to just taint a makeup product like that so I purchased no eyeshadow palettes which if I wasn't on this no buy low buy then I know for sure I mean I probably would have picked up like six palettes that interested me <laughs> I really wanted the Terra Moons space chemistry palette the two palettes from Bella Beauté Bar the ultraviolet the dead roses and there were so many. Um, there's one from Kema Cosmetics. They're a UK brand. I'll put their name up on the screen because I don't know if I'm saying that right. They came out with these Skull and Roses. That's the one that I think that I wanted to pick up. And those were kind of the ones on my radar. And I absolutely would have just purchased those indie palettes without thinking if I didn't really kind of wait and see which one I wanted. So no eyeshadow palettes. Now I did purchase a complexion product and this was what I asked for my birthday and it is the Guerlain Terracotta Concealer. I did already do a review on this concealer, a first impression, so I will link that video down below in the description and up above, but I'm happy with this. Originally, I almost purchased the Louboutin foundation because that is quite pricey and I was going to have that be my complexion purchase for the month. However, this was announced a little bit later and I decided to go with this instead. I almost, almost 
was like, oh, well, I'm not going to count it because if I buy both, it'll still be three products. And technically this one was a gift. That's where I kind of really sat down to think about the gift things, but I asked for this. So I counted this as my complexion and I'm really proud that I, I really only went with one instead of trying to find a loophole because that's something that I want to fix in my brain is I instantly was like, well, how can I kind of make this work and cheat the system a little bit? But this was my one complexion base product. And then for my bronzer blush highlight, I ended up picking up the Makeup by Mario Self Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. I haven't opened this yet. I picked up the shade Light. And honestly, like, I don't know if I should count this or not because in France, which is where I live, the Sephora point system works a little bit differently. You get a $30 gift card for your birthday to spend on whatever you want. And this was $33, which is why I opted for this. There were, again, some other things that I was looking at, like fragrances, etc., that were much higher priced and I was like no you're gonna just try something that's on your wish list that you've been wanting for a while that's closer to the 30 mark so I only paid three euros for this which is not bad and makeup by Mario just came to Europe not that long ago so that's why I haven't been able to purchase any makeup by Mario products and this is not new whatsoever I did swatch it just to see and I'm not going to do a video on this. I might pull it into a shop my stash or something like that. But I, I teetered on getting light or light medium. And I ultimately decided to go with light because if I want to kind of bronze up my face, if my face isn't as dark as my body, I decided this could kind of maybe be that product. So those were my two purchases for January. Let me know what you think. I think I'm off to a really great start and it's actually motivating for me now for February to go into this now that I feel like I've passed my hardest month. And now we're gonna go into my empties. So I usually organize these by category. The first one I wanna talk about though is not technically an empty, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. And that is the Rovectin Skin Essentials Barrier Repair Face and Body Cream. This is what this looks like. There's maybe like this much left. So YesStyle actually sent this to me to talk about, review, etc. They're always sending me skincare, which like I'm not complaining, it's just that I like to use it completely before I talk about it, so it just takes me a while. And the reason I'm talking about this, but it's not empty, is I used about 60% of it, and I noticed my husband was using it. He was using it actually as a moisturizer and on his hands. And I have tried, we've been together almost 10 years, I have not been able to get him to use any kind of skincare in that time. So he kind of took over this and he's been liking it a lot and I'm gonna let him finish it. So that's why I just kind of wanted to talk about it. This will definitely be something that I repurchase. He obviously very much likes it and enjoys it. And I also really liked it when I used it. This is just a simple lotion. And I like that it's multi-purpose. I like that it's, you know, for the face and body. I probably wouldn't use it on my face, but it's nice. Like if I was going on vacation and I just wanted to bring one product, this is something simple without having to bring like a whole slew of makeup products, skincare products. So very happy with this. Like I said, I definitely already planned to repurchase this before he kind of took it over and I'm happy with this. So thank you, yes, for sending this to me. And now I guess we'll just continue on with body care. And I only have two items. No, three. I have three items. So I have two little lotions here. This is what I switched to after I stopped using the Rovectin, but these are both from first aid beauty and it's the ultra repair cream i had just the original the little one which is one ounce and then i had a two ounce of the candy cane for winter and i wanted to just kind of get this out of my collection both of these are really nice i like the squeeze tube format i find it easy to use 
and you can actually get the product out. I used to use hemp lotions a lot and I hated that pump because it was just a pain to use. At the end, I had to turn it upside down and it wasn't coming out. And this just easy, simple, I like it a lot. And then the last body care item I have, this took me so long to use. I've had this for years. Honestly, I don't even, probably the salicylic acid isn't working anymore. It's probably not active, but this is the Sandra Lee MD Acne Body Wash. I used to be obsessed with like pimple popping. Fun fact about me, sorry if that's gross, but I love those videos. I find them so relaxing. I used to fall asleep to them every single night when I worked retail. It would just like shut my brain off and instantly put me to bed. So I bought a lot of products from her when she came out with her skincare line. And you know, I do like her skincare line. I, I liked it a lot. I liked, I thought it was very effective. This was one of the last things that I had from her that I purchased. I think I have one more and it's it's like this much left. I just don't use it very often. But this is just a body wash with 2% salicylic acid. I don't use this all the time. What I mainly use this for is like, if I notice I'm breaking out on my chest or sometimes like on the sides of my thighs, I'll get like little bumps just from skin buildup. So I'll use it then and it worked great. I do like the KP Bump Eraser more just because that has more grit to it and this is a lot more liquidy. So I would probably repurchase that one before this, but I have nothing bad to say other than this packaging, even though it's a squeeze tube and it's nice, because this was so thin, it just, it poured out and I had to be really careful when using it because it, it wasn't, there was no stopper to kind of give you more control of how much product was dispensing. It really just kind of like, psh, came out. And I don't know if she's updated her packaging. She might have because like I said, this is very, 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 very old. And that's all my body care. I just have skincare and makeup products. So let's let's do makeup before skincare because skincare is always the category I have the most of. And I actually have some makeup empties, which is exciting. Now, some of this is going to be spoilers for my Project Pan that's coming next Thursday. So skip this part. I always have timestamps below if you don't wanna see Project Pan spoilers, but I still wanna talk about them this month since I finished them. And the first one is my Becca Primer. This is the First Light Priming Filter. Finally used this up. It took me, let's see, one, two, three, four months to finish it up. It wasn't full when I started. It was here and very happy to have just another illuminating primer out of my collection. I don't really love illuminating primers. I kind of find them extra, like an unnecessary step, I guess. So I'm trying to work through all of my illuminating primers and then maybe just have one instead of 15. So happy to have another one out. And then I finished two powders, very happy, both minis, both travel sizes, but I'm still gonna celebrate because it takes me forever to finish a powder. The first one is the By Terry Hyaluronic Pressed Hydra Powder. This is one of By Terry's cult classic powders. It was great. Again, just like a teeny tiny mini. This was 2.5 grams. Here's what it's looking like. This still took me a long time to finish though. I mean, I'd, I'd have to look at my notes. At least six months, if not more, because I'm only setting it under my eyes. I only need very little. So it took me a long time, but it is done. And I'm happy to have this out of my collection as well. And then the other powder I have is just a mini of the Fenty Beauty. This is the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Setting Powder in the shade of Butter. I took the sifter out and everything. It is done. This had, let's see, 0.8 grams. So a lot less than the By Terry, but this still took me a long time. Loose powders take me even longer than pressed powders. And this was nice, I would, I would maybe reconsider purchasing this, but ideally I would only like to have one or two loose powders in my collection. And I don't know if this makes my 
top two spots, if that makes sense. Like there's probably others. I really love the Hourglass powder. And then I probably stick with like the Huda Beauty, which is more of a baking powder, similar to this, but I like the Huda Beauty more. So not a bad powder. I would repurchase this like in a pinch if I really needed something and this was all that I saw, but it was really just average and nothing super special where I have to run out and replace it. And then the last two things, kind of boring products, but I have the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Mascara. I've been using this for probably longer than I should, but I only keep one mascara open at a time until it's ready to go. And I love this mascara and I can't find it anywhere. I think they discontinued it, which is insane to me because they still have the clean fresh line i see a ton of things that are under this like pink clean fresh so if you see this mascara tell me where tell me where you see it and like i will pay you to send this to me that's how much i like this this is just the perfect everyday mascara it's black and I think that's maybe where my preferences go because on an everyday, on like a light makeup day, I used to really love brown mascara. And this is just like half a step up from a brown mascara and it's black, but still gives me like that natural everyday flutter. It separates, it lengthens just a little bit. It just looks like my natural lashes, but better. And that's what I really like about this. It just looks so natural on. Here's what the brush looks like. I mean, I do have a conspiracy theory that sometimes drugstores, Maybelline, L'Oreal, CoverGirl, just take the same mascara and repackage it. So if you know a CoverGirl mascara that has this type of wand, I'm even willing to test it out and see if it's the same as this Clean Fresh because I love, love, love this. And I wish I could find a backup. It just sat in my backup drawer for so long that by the time I got around to using it, they discontinued it. And the last makeup product I have is this eyebrow gel. It's tinted. It's from Sunny's Face, which is I think a K-Beauty brand. This was also old in my collection and decided to just get it out of here. I purchased this in the Philippines. I lived in the Philippines for two years and I really didn't purchase a lot of makeup products because I knew that everything I purchased, I was going to have to put in a suitcase and bring back. So this was the only thing. I remember we were at the mall and we went into this store and I kind of just tested this out and I, I put it on my arm to try like there's still a little bit of product in here i put it on my arm and then it like did not move i couldn't get it to move off of my arm so it really just tints your brows and holds them in place i mean it is like waterproof and you know oh this is called the life brow yes so don't know where you can purchase this in the states or anywhere else but i did really like it i don't I don't think I'd repurchase it because it is like very, very tinted. And again, with mascara, I only like to have one brow gel open at a time. So sometimes I found it a little bit heavy and harsh. If you have just like beautiful natural brows that you don't want to fill in, like this is great if you just want some like darkening tint to them, but sometimes it can be a little bit harsh and it's not like my one and only, I'd rather, honestly use a pencil and a clear brow gel that's just a little bit more comfortable for me but i did like this this has happy memories attached to it from a time a while ago i can't believe it's been like four years since i lived in the philippines like it's crazy it feels like yesterday but that's this and that's all my makeup so now we just have skincare and we'll be done all right let's try to breeze through skincare I'm gonna talk about the biggest thing here. This took me forever to finish. This is the Youth to the People Kale and Green Tea Spinach Vitamins Superfood Cleanser. Um, this was eight fluid ounces. So you can obviously probably guess, like I think this took me, it took me at least four months to finish. 
if not five or six, I don't remember, but this was really nice. It is a gel cleanser. I prefer more of like a milky foaming cleanser, but I did, you know, grow to really like this and I would repurchase this. I love the bottle. I love the pump on it. It was very easy to use. I kept it in my shower. I know you shouldn't wash your face in the shower, but sometimes we make sacrifices for convenience and I very much enjoy this. I have nothing bad to say. I know you can buy refill bottles, but right now I'm just trying to get through my backlog of skincare. So I'm already on to the next cleanser that I have, but not a bad one. And I, I quite liked it for a gel cleanser. This I hated. This I think I've had in my empties before, like two or three times, and I've hated it every single time. This is the Pie Rosehip facial oil. I kept getting these as a free gift with purchase on Colt Beauty. Oh, I hate this so much. And like, I just, I can't bring myself to like toss it and throw it away. I just don't like the smell of this. It does not smell like rosehip to me. It is not expired because this is like a recent product that I would get as a free gift with purchase, but it just doesn't smell good. It's very oily, greasy for a facial primer, for facial oil. I don't, I just don't like it. I tried to pawn it off on my husband. It did not work as does anything except for that Rovectin cream. And I ended up using this as cuticle oil on my toes just so I wouldn't have to smell it. So this is finally gone. And if I get any more as a free gift, like I will just pass it on. I can't, I can't continue to work through these. I do have some moisturizers. So I usually try to have a morning moisturizer and then a nighttime moisturizer. I have these, they're all the same. And I only talk about them once I finish like all the minis, if I have minis. So that way I'm not repeating myself every time. And it also gives me a chance to like really, really try this. Um, so this was my morning moisturizer and this is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. Definitely like a well talked about product. I actually have one more that's in my medicine cabinet. However, it has like one more use in it. So it's gonna be done today. I'll probably just knock it out tonight so I can just toss it, but I didn't wanna talk about it next month. And I had to film this video today. So I had six of these and each one is 0.25 fluid ounces. So that is one and a half ounces that I used. And this is nice. It's a basic facial cream. If you're super sensitive to things, if like you probably break out easily, I could see this being a really great moisturizer. It's just a simple moisturizer that does its job. It has nothing really in it that's going to break you out or those extra, you know, things that they just add into products over and over to like spice it up. No. This is just basic, standard, great moisturizer, nothing bad to say. I'm not gonna repurchase it because I have other moisturizers that I love more than this, but I have nothing, again, nothing bad to say about this. It's really just a nice everyday moisturizer if you're looking for something simple that works. And then my nighttime moisturizer is the Boschia, and this is the Chia Seed Moisture Cream. Uh, I hated this, <laughs> this. Product. I don't know. I'm pretty sure this like broke me out. I've kind of been having breakouts on my foreheads here. Here's what it looks like. This had half a fluid ounce. So together it was one fluid ounce. I just haven't been impressed with Boschia products. I've tried like their cactus moisturizer. I didn't really like that. It just, it just wasn't good. This is the chia seed moisture cream if I didn't say that. And it was just thick I didn't, I didn't like it. So there's nothing to say other than that. Just a few more things, two sunscreens, and this is the Dermalogica Dynamic Skin Recovery with SPF 50. I like this sunscreen a lot. I actually would repurchase it if I didn't already have my Holy Grail sunscreen that just beats out every sunscreen. I talked about it in my last empties. It's the Haru Haru Black Rice sunscreen, something like that. It's just a matte sunscreen and I prefer that over like these very glowy ones. Dermalogica is a little bit more of a pricey skincare brand and that Haru Haru one is like $15. So I'm gonna stick with that one, but this was a nice sunscreen and I have nothing bad to say about it. Next, I have a serum. This is the number seven Firming Booster Serum. This only had three mLs, so I used it 
four times. I don't know, something like that. And it was okay. Nothing that really stood out to me. I don't remember what I think of this, so kind of pointless to talk about. Then I have a lip mask. This is so cute. I love this. This is the Frutia and it's just the Blueberry Hydrating Lip Balm. So it looks like a little honey pot. I know ColourPop has something that's similar to this, but this was my first time trying this one. And this was my first time trying this brand, Frutia, I think it's hopefully how you say it. it's K-Beauty brand. I got it on Yes Style. So it is completely empty. It smelled like blueberries. It's very Vaseline-y and I liked that. I prefer this over the Laneige. I have a few more Laneiges I'm trying to get through and I will probably either repurchase this or repurchase the Lano lips, I think. I'm just over the Laneige sleeping mask. They have like great flavors and like it's fun and exciting to like see the new limited edition flavors, but it doesn't work for me as well as just a more jelly consistency, which is what I liked about this. So this was super cute. I liked having it in my medicine cabinet. It made me happy to use it every time. So yeah, I really just recommend this. You can find it on YesStyle. I believe I picked this up because it was like on a flash sale for 50% off. I'll have it linked down below, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. And my last thing is this Breakout Aid Love Your Skin Emergency Dots. These are just those little like pimple patches, those little pimple circles. I think they're pretty popular now. They work fantastically. Like you just put it on a blemish and it just like sucks everything out of it. I love it. It works so good. So I finished this box and I have one more like small pack left and then I'll definitely be repurchasing some sort of dot kind of thing, whether it's this brand or a different brand. I haven't really found one brand to be better than another. If you have like a holy grail brand that you think works better than other brands, let me know. Because for me, like I haven't really noticed a difference. However, typically like I don't, I don't break out that often. Like this forehead situation, which may not look bad to most people, it's very uncommon for me. So I really use them, you know, once, twice, maybe three times a month, if anything. So they last me quite a long time, but I would love to know if you notice a difference with other pimple patches and if there's a brand that you recommend. And those are all my empties, all my purchases. Like I said, I'm just very happy with my progress so far. It's only been one month, but at least we're like, we're starting strong and I'm not gonna beat myself up if we have a little slips here and there, but I'm really trying my hardest to just take a step back from like the overconsumption. I think I talked about my last video, you know, that it wasn't necessarily about budget for me. And I just wanna clarify, cause I kind of felt like I didn't explain that well enough. Like, of course I have a budget, but the purpose of my low buy is more about overconsumption rather than the amount of money that I'm spending. Obviously I don't have like limit, unlimited amounts of money to be spending on makeup, but I just don't want like the money aspect to be the focus. I want the focus to be on having less things and using the things that I enjoy over that. So I hope that makes sense. This is where I'm gonna leave you all. I hope you're having a great one and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.